All right, so for part two in this series, I'm just going to take a pause here and that's the old thermal mass tank. Uh, I used to, last couple of years, I would bring that in the greenhouse, fill that with the water as a thermal mass reserve, and then in the summer I bring it out and put it up there as a secondary ram pump reservoir. Uh, I'm changing my tactics a little bit this year, at least for testing purposes. Uh, with the exception of running a new DC power lead, uh, which I will probably do tomorrow evening. Um, but uh, the circulator is running. I've added uh, two new thermometer sensors here, uh, high and low in the tank, as I always do, and then we calculate the average temperature from that and then from that we can derive the number of BTUs uh, based on how many gallons there is and how many pounds of water to the gallon uh, and uh, it's running new sensors are coated in and it's working well so that's it for the update for now on the new thermal mass hydronic system for the new reservoir pretty excited one last thing real quick, I didn't show you that uh, I just used a, a garden stake and zip ties to set the depth and the suction line to go straight to the bottom. So we're pulling the coldest water from the bottom to run through the coil to get the highest thermal temperature difference between the two to grab as much. So now that you have that reference, uh, usually that tank goes here and it's four foot by four foot. I think it's like 42 inches wide or something, but basically it's four foot by four foot by four foot. So that's a tremendous amount of cubic footage space that's taken up here. Uh, that tank works really great. That stores a tremendous amount of BTUs, uh, but it takes up a lot of space in the greenhouse. And uh, so this year I'm going to try some new things. Uh, this greenhouse was set up, as I said in the previous video in this series, basically this was set up as an experiment and testing uh, facility to test out uh, greenhouses and different techniques for warming, cooling, heating, all that sort of stuff and then ultimately so I have a place to bring my tropical plants in over the winter and be able to propagate back from them in the spring. So this year uh, I brought this uh, bin in here. This tank used to hold water as another thermal mass but now it has a leak that's uh, pretty well beyond repairable for any uh, practical purposes. Um, and uh, so I've decided to use this as a, a, a growing planter, basically. Uh, I transplanted the ginger in here. I did a video on that recently. If you've been watching my channel, you know that. If you haven't, now you know. Um, so uh, this is doing for ginger. Uh, I have a whole other ginger propagation plant over here, which uh, I'm going to, at some point, when I get the chance and the time, I'm going to pull those out and propagate them out into another bigger planter or several planters. I may put in some sort of an in the greenhouse actual uh, soil block to grow ginger in uh, near the stove here where it's warmer. Again, that goes back to providing plant comfort and environment to what the plant likes. <clears throat> but since this video is about greenhouses and part of the greenhouse series, I just want to go over uh, some of my basic plans for this year. Uh, for some modifications so you can kind of understand where I'm going and how I'm doing this. So as I mentioned, water makes great thermal mass. Moist soil has a lot of water in it, so that does make a great thermal mass as well. The soil itself also holds heat, of course, and the advantage of that if you're growing plants in it is you have warm soils. Uh, if you've done any in-depth reading on plant health, uh, oftentimes uh, in greenhouses they will warm the soil, and having the soil a little bit warmer than the air actually stimulates really good plant growth. So um, to that end, I, this is going to be one of the thermal mass uh, things in here. I don't have any coils run through it. I'm just going to let it uh, collect radiation right off of the stove. Uh, in the winter when the stove is running really hot, uh, it, it's all you can do to sit three feet from this thing. It puts off a tremendous amount of heat energy. And so that will radiate, hit this tank, absorb into the tank, and warm that soil. In addition to that, uh, I normally have there's a coil inside of here, just show you that quick. It's a copper wort coil, it's used for chilling wort for making beer, uh, but it was the cheapest coil I could find that already had fittings on it, so I didn't have to go out and spend another $15 on the brass conversion fittings to go to garden hose and such. 
So ordinarily that coil is hooked to, used to be hooked to this pump. There's new pumps coming. Um, and what I would do is I'd monitor the temperature in this pot when it exceeds a certain temperature or when the difference between this and the big thermal mass tank that was here was high enough, we'd trip that pump on and transfer some of the heat from this to that tank and store it as a reserve basically. That does two things. That makes it really easy to transfer heat from the top of the stove, which is the most efficient method of producing heat, anything you can capture above. Remember, heat rises and the more hot it is the faster it rises so we're capturing that heat here storing it in that thermal mass tank and then doing that efficiently by not running this pump all the time only turning it on when it's necessary to transfer heat and you'd be surprised this is a 40 gallon tank effectively here this is a 200 quart stainless steel stock pot and uh, in about five minutes maybe ten you can pull off about 10,000 BTUs from this with that pump to the other tank. So in a 10 minute cycle at 8 watts to run that pump, uh, you've taken off all, all you need for heat until the stove can recover that temperature back up to a higher temperature again. So this year what I'm doing, uh, I'm going to take out this other supportive bracket that was here from back when I first built the greenhouse. I already took the other one out over in the corner there and I'm going to stuff insulation a friend of mine gave me a whole bunch of uh, that nice thick styrofoam insulation I'm going to stuff insulation somewhere between two and four feet tall here so that we're not blocking too much of the light but that'll give us a huge insulative factor and then I'll be able to push these planters like this and the ginger which is currently basically right up against the plastic I don't know if you can see that down through there you can see that's right up against the plastic. So in the winter, when it's really cold out, you're conducting a tremendous amount of cold into that planter, and that slows the growth of those down. With the insulation there, that should help retain some of that heat. I'm also going to do that over on this side. Uh, I'm going to leave those rails in, I think, but I'm going to do the same thing. Styrofoam uh, insulation on the bottom. Uh, oftentimes when we get snow in the winter, you'll see the snow packed right up against that, uh, almost up to the rail. So. Uh, that'll help keep all that cold out and then in this bed here I'm going to pull all these plants out of here temporarily and I'm going to run some PEX tubing in here or some sort of tubing might use black coil poly pipe because that's what I have uh, but I'm going to run tubing through here I'm going to fill some soil on top of that to distribute the heat from that tubing and then a secondary pump will run it'll pump out of this side tank here which always sits somewhere between like 60 and 100 degrees uh, even in the winter when we're running a stove pretty hard you can see there's not a lot of clearance between those two it's pretty close so that captures a lot of that heat off of the side of the stove so we'll pump out of this I have a bunch of copper coils that a friend of mine gave me I'll pump out of this we'll make a loop or two around the thermal mass to pick up a little bit more heat on our way through and then we'll run down to that loop and uh, that loop will run up through here and coil back through here in some form or fashion and then return back to this tank with the cold water because by the time it comes back here it'll be cold. So the idea is we're going to be uh, heating the underside of the soil into these plants. That should help provide better plant comfort, especially root-wise. One of the biggest things, as I mentioned in the previous video, is plants getting cold feet. Boy, you really don't want cold feet. If you've ever had cold feet yourself, you know what I'm talking about plants don't like that either and they don't do well with it you have to remember that soil has to be kept warm has to be kept at optimal temperature for the biology in that soil to remain active and for the plant to be able to feed those exudates to that biology so that biology can release nutrients and send them back I'm going to mention here on my way through just because this is a really important factor to consider in general in plant growth most plants grow 50 to 80 percent of their growth throughout the day is done between 4 a.m. and 8 a.m. and so when you consider when you get start getting cold nights if your plants are cold between 4 and 8 a.m. they're not going to get much growth they're way out of their comfort zone at their peak growth period it's something to consider so uh, so that's basically just an update of where I'm going this year and what I'm going to experiment with. I think that's actually going to help tremendously with keeping this side of the greenhouse uh, much warmer. Um, given that the stove and thermal mass is mostly over there, 
and th this end of the greenhouse is both the entrance end and I do seal this door up as best I can with my with my flaps here I make these plastic flaps so they actually tuck over and sort of help seal it up and then I close the door it acts sort of as a double layer uh, but we still get cold air infiltrating through here and um, and that tends to come in and run right across the floor remember hot and cold cold's gonna settle hot's gonna rise so when you get ice cold air coming in it's coming in here it's flowing across at that stove where it gets heated and will rise back as warm air but before it gets there it's coming across all these plants and all these roots cold and cooling them and we definitely don't want that in the winter so I think this is gonna help I may even extend a piece of styrofoam insulation here to help kind of uh, protect the edge of this off from that cold draft but we'll see how that works out logistically anyway that's the plan for this year and uh, we'll go forward from there uh, this will be part two of the series on how to set up your own greenhouse tips tricks techniques etc again if you have questions or comments please do so down below I'd love to hear any questions you have if there's something you don't understand or you want to know more about don't be afraid to ask me about it. I'm glad to elaborate and go into much greater detail. All right, so in the greenhouse working here, uh, performing some of the upgrades I was just talking about. Uh, I got most of the insulation in. I got one more section on this end and the corner end to do. And I'll probably do the other end as well. Um, managed to get the styrofoam in behind all of these it's about 24 inches high I think that's about right that's enough to do insulation but we're not blocking too much light out I think you start going too much higher than that you're really cutting a lot a lot of your light sources out and I just wanted to make the point over here uh, regarding the stove <laughs> regarding the stove one of the things you have to consider is not putting plants too close to the stove and it may seem like they're far enough away but it's not necessarily far enough away uh, I think I mentioned before sitting three feet from this in the winter when it's running hot is enough to really cook you right out uh, you'll find your pants are getting so hot you have to move um, pretty quickly so uh, in order to mitigate that so that these plants don't take a lot of heat damage from radiation off the back of the stove it's even hotter over here with the stove pipe and the stove both radiating heat so th these don't get damaged that's why this metal sheet is here to act as a shield to prevent radiated heat from cooking these plants too much so they're in a warm comfortable space but they're not being fried we don't want to mimic desert we just want to uh, warm things up a bit so I just thought I'd make the point about that was in here doing things okay uh, just finished getting the rest of this uh, front wall in insulation wise I guess I'll just show that quick while we're here. I haven't gotten the ends in yet. That's going to be a little bit more complicated cutting and stuff, so I'll uh, do that when I have more time to focus on it. But uh, the rest of this has got a big uh, insulation wall here. That should help uh, help keep things a little more comfortable in here. And then uh, i got to get some tubing or something and run in here and bring in some soil might just bring in native clay or something uh, ideally I'd put sand down and keep it damp but uh, I don't have a great sand source here so I'll probably just put down uh, clay soil over the tubes so it's a nice even pad and then we'll put the plants on it anyway I just want to do a quick update since I uh, got inspired making this video and got some uh, some of the upgrade done obviously there's a long ways to go with other pieces but at least we have that insulation layer in so that's kind of nice all right, uh, that's it for now. Thank you for watching the Pharmacy Seeds Network. I hope that you'll like, share, and subscribe.